A vector is anything that has a magnitude and a direction. So we have two examples of vectors here on the screen. We have one vector, which we call u, and we put the little vector symbol above it. You may also see it with a line underneath, especially in linear algebra in a mathematics textbook. So this vector u goes from the point 1, 1, so that's 1x and 1y, all the way up to 5x and 5y. So in order to get what this vector is, we simply take the difference of how it changes in x and how it changes in y. You may also see it written like this with angular brackets. So in this case, it is going four to the right or four positive in the x direction and four positive in the y direction. So we would say that u here is the vector four, four. And this vector can be moved around and it is still going to be the same vector because that is how far it's going x and how far it's going in the y direction. With the vector v down below, this might look a little bit more complicated, but the process is really similar. So we're taking the change in x and the change in y to determine what our vector is here. So this is going from negative 3 to positive 3. So we have a change of 6 in the x direction, positive. And now it's going from, well, this says 1, but this is more like negative 1. So this is going from negative 1 to negative 4. So this is going 3 in the negative y direction. So this vector would be 6, negative 3. It's important that we keep the directions in mind. Otherwise, if this were, say, the vector 6, 3, this would look a little bit more like that. It would be going upwards in the y direction. So the negatives and positives do matter. Now, when you have two vectors, how do we add them? Well, it's fairly straightforward. We just take the components of uh, u, if that's your first vector, and the components of v, if that's your second vector, and we add them together. So visually what this looks like, let's say we have two vectors. So we have two, three. So let's just call this v. We have u, which is negative one, two. So it's going to the left one and it's going up two. So we can draw this out. We have something that looks like that. So we can call that u in this case. We just put our little lines in to show where they are. If we want to find the sum of the two vectors, we simply take the beginning of v and take it to the end of u. The order really doesn't matter here, and I will show you why in a little bit. So this would be our final vector. So we can draw that in. And this would be u plus v, or also v plus u. In this particular case, we're doing v plus u. So mathematically, what we're doing here is we're taking each of the components and we're adding them together. So we'll take negative 1, 2 from u plus v, and or from u, and we're going to take 2, 3 from v, and I'll just write out all the steps here. So now we just add each row together. So this is negative 1 plus 2 for the x and 2 plus 3 for the y. So what we get is 1 and 5. So this vector, this new vector that we have, which I'll just uh, take out here. So let's say it looks a little bit like that. Uh, this is what it would be doing. It would be going to the right one and then going up 5 and these would be equivalent in that case. So we can see that visually and we can see it mathematically. Now what happens if we want to subtract vectors? Well, it's the same thing as adding the negative uh, version of that vector. So if we do u minus v, really what we're doing is u plus negative v. So if v is 2, 3 and u is negative 1, 2, Let's just show how this works. So we take negative 1, 2, and we're going to subtract 2, 3. So this is going to do the same thing as taking negative 1, 2 and adding the negative version of v. So to do this, we just flip all the values inside the vector, and then we get the negative version. 
So uh, in the bottom here, we're subtracting V. And now what we're doing is we're adding negative V. So what we get as a final outcome, again, we just add the components. Uh, so all of the X, so negative one plus negative two becomes negative three and two plus negative three becomes negative one. So that's how we would get that vector. Let's show this visually. So we're starting with u, which is negative one, two. So this will look something like that. Now, two, three, if we're just adding it, is gonna look something like that. But we're not adding it, we are subtracting it. So we essentially just take it in the opposite direction. So now we're doing negative three down and negative two to the right. So this is going to be our negative V. This will be our U. And that final result that we're going to get is going to look like this. So this very closely resembles uh, negative three, one. Negative three, negative one, which is what we should have gotten. So that's how we can subtract vectors. Now, I mentioned earlier that order does not matter for addition. It will for subtraction, but not for addition. So what we see from adding vectors in two different ways is what's called the parallelogram law. So imagine I have two new vectors. In fact, let's just draw this on a grid. So that way we can see this relative to uh, the zero spot zero zero so let's do v plus u so we have a vector that is one zero so that's just going one in the x direction let's make that a little bit thicker so we can see it there's one in the x direction so let's call that v and then we'll add u to it so negative three one so it's going up one unit but it's really going three in the negative direction. So we end up with this point. So that's U. So our final vector is essentially going to be from V to U. So it will look like this. And I need to turn off my snapping tool so I can draw it quite nicely. There we go. So that would be our vector u plus v, or v plus u. So it'll work out the same. So if we do it in the other direction, so let's say we do u first. So that would be negative three, one. So we'd end up about there. And then we add v to it, which is one, zero. You can see we end up at the same point, And what we have is a parallelogram. So the typical drawing you would get in a textbook is something like this, where it would work very nicely as an example, but it doesn't really matter which type of vector you use, because in the end, it will be equivalent mathematically. And let me show you a proof for how this works. So let's just say that we have a vector u with components u1 and u2. So uh, actually, let's just change this to be a little bit more uh, intuitive. Let's say it's x1 and y1. OK, and then v is going to be x2 and y2. So now, if we add these together, what we'll end up with is x1 plus x2 and then y1 plus y2. And that will be our result. But what if we can flip them around? You know, if we do x1 plus x2, we know that's gonna be the same as x2 plus x1. If we do y1 plus y2, we know that'll be the same thing as y2 plus y1. And then we can split these off. So now we have x2, y2 plus x1, y1. And what's that? That's just the same thing as v plus u. So we started with u plus v. We did some changes in the middle using the commutative property, and we ended up with V plus U, and that's a proof that they are identical. So that's it for this video, and I'll see you in the next one.